acting compassionately. Oh, I need my volunteer for my slides. Thank you. <laughs> um, oh, I'm gonna go like sideways here. Okay. Um, so living consciously is something that I like to talk a lot about. Um, living consciously has a lot to do with, uh, you know, how we're going about our actions in our daily lives and how we're making a difference on the environment, animals, and other people. Um, so living a more conscious life is something that's gonna be a key theme throughout the presentation. And I put this quote from one of my favorite people, Jane Goodall, uh, what you do makes a difference and you have to decide what kind of difference you wanna make. And I think that that's just a really profound statement um, and something that we need to think about in our daily lives. You're good at that. <laughs> um, and then the second half of it is acting compassionately. So acting compassionately um, is a key theme for me in my life. and. Um, compassion really means having sympathetic pity towards others um, and the misfortune of others. So that's the definition broadly, um, but we'll get more into that. He wants to sit. Okay. And this is one of my rescue puppies that has severe uh, separation anxiety, so he will be now presenting with me. <laughs> Next. Okay, so I like to, um, I always like to bridge the gap between animals, environment, and people because I feel like a lot of the times we're always thinking about, you know, a, a huge theme throughout this festival is going vegan, right? And a lot of the things you've been seeing today is about health and is about um, animals and also about the environment. So something that I like to bring together is those three things because a lot of the actions that we take every day are really part of a trifecta. So um, that's kind of a term I like to use and it's really thinking about our actions on a daily basis and how they affect animals, people, and the environment. So um, a couple of examples I just wanted to kind of pull in. Um, I won't bore you guys with stats, but I wanted to talk about two, two different things that are a big part of a trifecta effect on the environment, animals, and people. One of those things is overfishing. Um, so as you guys know, you can kind of, I mean, you guys can read through the, I won't go through all of them, um, but we're looking at a huge depletion in fish stock, which is mostly because of overfishing. Um, of course, climate change and temperatures are having an effect on the ocean um, and how many fish are producing, male, female. We have all kinds of biodiversity issues happening right now. Um, but overfishing is causing a lot of problems, and we don't only think of that for fish in the ocean. Not only does it affect the animals in the ocean, the bigger animals in the ocean, um, sharks, other marine mammals that eat those fish. It also affects us and it also affects poor populations that depend greatly on fish for their protein. Um, and another thing is the bycatch, which hey. <laughs> he's fishing right now actually. Um, bycatch catches dolphins, sea turtles. So whether you think you're having an impact on dolphins, sea turtles um, directly, you are by eating seafood because any bycatch they're not saving them, so that's the, the bad news about bycatch. Um, and then also there was a recent uh, university study done in 2014 that actually showed that we're eating up to 11,000 part 11, particles of plastic every day if we're eating seafood in our diet. So if you think about that, I don't even think we have the knowledge just yet to realize exactly what that plastic is going to do to our bodies, to our children and future generations, but we're gonna have all kinds of genetic mutations, I believe, internally from having so much pl plastic in our system. So I use this as an example because I'm not just telling you don't eat seafood for the animals, which would be my first go, but it's for you as well, for your health, and it also has big implications for the environment. So this is one of those areas that is a trifecta. It affects everything, so each decision that you make about seafood has an effect on animals, people, and the environment. Palm oil. This is one of my biggest campaign and things that I work on um, a lot is palm oil. Palm oil is completely unnecessary. We don't need it. It causes heart disease, all kinds of high cholesterol issues. But palm oil is very, very tricky. And um, not only is it devastating forests in Borneo and Sumatra, I'm sure you guys have seen palm oil campaigns, seeing what's happening to the orangutans we're estimated that in the next 50 years, we're not going to have orangutans anymore, which is devastating news. Um, we just lost the Northern White Rhino a couple weeks ago. I don't know if you guys saw that, but we're really starting to see, you know, we, we haven't paid so much attention to the little animals along the way, little amphibian here, a lizard here, frog, but it starts to go up the chain, and now we're starting to lose some of our biggest animals. So 
Um, that's really devastating. But also, the indigenous peoples suffer a lot with palm oil. Um, they're clearing out farms, and almost it's pretty much slave labor. So we're, we're also causing a problem for the indigenous people. They don't have the land to live off of anymore. They don't have the natural resources that were available to them once. So you're not only impacting animals, you're also impacting other people, but you're also impacting yourself by eating all the palm oil. Um, so this is another trifecta effect that is something simple that you can make a change as soon as you walk out of here. It's not something that requires a complete life cha uh, lifestyle change. You can walk out of here and go to the grocery store tonight and say, you know what, I'm not gonna eat salmon for dinner, and you're making an impact. You can walk out of here and you can read the back of an ingredient on a, I mean, if you're dieting, you're reading the label. If you're trying to you know, improve your cholesterol, you're reading the label. So I think it's a very small thing that you can do in your daily life and not consume palm oil that has a big effect. Um, if you wanna take it up a notch, you can always reach out to corporate and write them an email and tell them how you don't want them using palm oil in your products. But um, this is another just big example of how we're kind of bridging the gap between environmental justice, animals, and people. Oh, it did. Oh, good for you. <laughs> I can't even see my own slides. <laughs> All right, so um, some things that I, just some tips that I wanted to give you guys on how to live more consciously. Um, these are just a few. I'll read through them quickly. Um, connecting with nature. Just, I mean, that's, that, that's a given. Um, we enjoy going to parks. We enjoy nature. I don't think anyone doesn't enjoy going and seeing a mountain, going to the beach. We all enjoy nature in some aspects. So to preserve nature, we need to think more consciously about it. Um, raising your consciousness, coming to events like this, listening to people like me, um, and doing your research about things that you buy. The, the most important thing you can do is be a good consumer. That's how you're gonna have a lasting impact, and that's the most easy way without completely having a complete lifestyle change that you can actually make change in the world, is just what you buy at the grocery store. Um, filtering out things you cannot change with things you can. Um, this one, I'll spend a little more time on because this is one of my favorite ways of living more consciously. I think we are inundated with media all day long. I'm sure a few of you are on your phone right now, on Facebook, scrolling, something. Um, so we get all this bad news, things in Syria and things that are going on all over the world and politics and Trump and there's a lot of stuff going on, but if you can't actually make a significant difference with that, Focus on something that you can make a small difference that can actually make an impact. And I'm not saying your vote doesn't count, I'm not that person, your vote does count. <laughs> but making small things, you know, small decisions in your everyday life that can actually make an impact rather than spending so much time reading through things and arguing with people and judging people for who they voted, you know, things that aren't exactly in your control. So I think the news kind of inundates us and gives us all this bad information all the time, but be on the positive side of it and just find something that you can do in your daily life to make a difference. Um, find and live your purpose. This one is also super important. Um, I think we're not gonna have a leash after this, but that's okay. Um, find and live your purpose. This one, really resonates a lot with me because before I started my foundation, I was working in corporate, before dreads and tattoos and all of this that you see now. Um, believe it or not, I should have like a before photo of me like in corporate, and look at me now that I'm vegan and doing all this other stuff. Um, but when I worked in corporate, I made a lot of money and it was wonderful and I had all the nice cars and I had a nice house and I could do whatever I wanted. Um, and all of that was great, but I wasn't living my true life and my true purpose, and I know what that is now. And I am very poor now, but I'm also very rich and happy. So that is my be me, but figure out a way to make more money. That's, that's the key. Um, and taking conscious control of your decisions. Um, that's an easy one. That's like what I said, going to the supermarket and buying things that are better for everyone. Um, being open-minded and trying new things, I think, coming to stuff like this and trying things that you, you know, if you haven't tried almond milk or you haven't tried uh, soy ice cream, you know, trying alternatives that can be better for the environment, animals, and yourself. Um, challenging your belief system. This one's a tough one. I won't go too far into detail on this one, but I think, <laughs> I think we all, we all have preconceived notions. We're all nurtured a certain way. We all grow up with our family a certain way. I. And all, I'm just a mutt, but I grew up very Greek and Italian and Spanish, and there was a ton of meat and goats hanging every Easter outside, and 
it was a part of the culture and I had to get through that and say, okay, well that's not gonna be my lifestyle, but I can still, you know, appreciate my family, but I don't have to be a part of that. So yes. I think that that's a, that's a hard one for people because a lot of people will say, but I'm Spanish, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, those rice and beans, and, you know, and I'm like, okay, yeah, but you can leave off the pollo and just have the rice and beans. Um, befriending like-minded individuals. So everyone in this room should not be friends because we're all like-minded individuals, right? Because we're listening to me. Yes. <laughs> um, taking full control of your lifestyle, that's an easy one. Um, setting a positive example for others. So don't, I never like to be the preachy vegan. I, I'm not that person at all. If you follow me on Instagram, I, I know. I, it's not my style. I'm like the live consciously, act compassionately person. But you don't always have to like be in people's faces, but you can give them education and knowledge. And I'm like a really great subliminal person. Like I'll just slide things and they won't know that it's meat free or it's you know a vegan ice cream. Um, so I always try to like be open, be open-minded, give people the opportunity, give them the chance, but also give them some ideas and education about it. Um, and thinking positive, acting positively, and being positive, I think that explains itself, so I won't go into detail. And then seven ways to live more compassionately, being kind um, to others, obviously reduce, reuse, recycle, we've all known that since first grade. Um, buying fair trade and local, so supporting all of your local vendors that are here today and not going for the corporate products, always a good way to support um, and do good for the environment and everyone else. Organic green products, donate or volunteer your time with good causes like mine, I will give you that information soon. Um, stop eating animals, everyone knows that, we, we've just got to stop. We've, got, we've gotten to a point now where we just have got to evolve to a new level of Amen. We, we, we really do. I mean, I won't, I won't sugarcoat that. We really just need to stop eating animals, period. Um, and be kind to yourself. Be nice to yourself. Be healthy for yourself. A vegan diet, and again, I'm not preaching, but vegan diet is healthier for you. And even if you minimize it, even if you go vegetarian, even if you cut out meat five days a week and only eat it once a week, whatever it is, you're doing better justice for yourself. So be kind to yourself. Okay. So, enough about conscious and compassionate living. I'm going to show you guys some of the work that I do right now and how I am living consciously and compassionately through my foundation. And this guy, I will also, this is one of my rescues, but I'll get to him in a minute because he's got a great story. Um, So our mission at Compassion Kind is to cultivate compassionate change and minimize suffering for all kinds. Um, We do this through advocacy, education, um, community projects, and disaster relief. Um, and we really envision a world with less suffering and more compassion. Oh. <laughs> well, we have a cleanup on aisle four, if someone can help with that. Um, <laughs> and really extending our circle of compassion to all kinds. So that's what compassion kind means, is really extending our circle of compassion to all kind, regardless of species, religion, race, politics, anything. So some of the work we do, some of the pictures are a little hard to see, but we do a lot of animal rescue. Um, I have a shelter in Puerto Rico. I've been working over there since the hurricane. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard about that. It's just as devastating as they've said on the news. Um, This little guy came from Puerto Rico. He was hit by a car and left for dead on the side of the road and came into my shelter at like 11 p.m., um, just covered in bruises, black and blue, crying and he has multiple fractures, broken ankle, broken pelvic bone, I mean, you name it, and he is standing here peeing on my mic and just living his life, so <laughs> that's one aspect of what I do. Oh, it's okay, it's okay, um, We also find homeless animals, get them vaccinated and checkups, give them shelter, food, water, and love. Hi there, everyone. Yes. Okay. My name is Matthew. Hello. My name is Matthew. All right. Okay. Next, please. So we do a lot of um, feeding of strays. Unfortunately, we don't have the capacity in our shelter to take every animal off the street, but we do have some rotations that we do every day. Um, we have volunteers that go out and feed the strays, and then we basically put them in a queue, and whenever we have availability at the shelter, <laughs> we take them in. He's trying to make a name for himself. I see this. And then we fly them here. So if anyone is ever interested in helping us out, um, we actually have a flight coming in tonight. 
um, at 10 o'clock. We fly animals in from Puerto Rico. We also do local rescues. People always ask me that too. We do pull from shelters and we do accept owner surrenders. We do all kinds of rescue work, but one of our biggest initiatives right now is Puerto Rico. Um, and we're only a month out from the next hurricane season, so we'll be probably all over the Caribbean again trying to help. Um, and finding them homes, these are some of our rescue animals that have found their homes here in the St. Pete Clearwater area. Oh, I did a little fun transition there. Nice. <laughs> Fancy. Um, but, but we also help people too. Everything is full circle. So um, animals are my passion, but people are also my passion. So we do a little bit of everything. Um, we do a lot of education, healthcare, water and sanitation, and disaster relief work. Um, we also have health clinics. We do a health clinic in Malawi and Uganda. Um, right now we're building a health clinic, a full service health clinic in Malawi um, that will serve 22,000 people in the area that have never had access to health care. Um, so that's another part of what we do. Um, that's one of our clinics, me doing some doctor work, even though I'm not a doctor, but. Are you? A fake doctor. Oh, fake doctor, okay. <laughs> Listen, when you're, when you're in these parts, you gotta just do what you gotta do. Um, and then disaster relief. These are all shots, these are all personal shots from Puerto Rico after the devastation, after the hurricane, um, people losing their homes, their houses. This was an area in Utuado uh, where the bridge collapsed and so actually my team is walking across while the water is, levels are low, um, and climbing a ladder to bring people supplies on the other side. So the climate, I mean, all of these things that I'm talking about, climate change and disaster relief, just go hand in hand. And we're starting to see more storms, more devastation. Um, and all of these things have to do with what we're doing. And you know, we've gotten to a point now where, unfortunately, me going to the store today and making a decision is not going to stop another Hurricane Maria from coming. But if we're all collectively doing this, I do think that we can still make a difference. If we start now, we're at a tipping point in climate change right now, where we either get it right or we fall off. So um, it's really important that we start making the these decisions now because it will have an impact. Um, and then we also have education programs, but we do a lot with humane education as well. Um, so humane education is something that I focus a lot on. Um, in a lot of these rural areas, animals are really just seen as a utility. So it's what they can use, because their, their thought process is, how can I survive today? So animals are just a utility of how we can get through the day. So what my team and I do is we go throughout the villages and we teach education programs to students in orphanages, primary schools, and secondary schools. And we show them how to be kind to animals and how they can use dogs to protect their homes, um, protect their livestock instead of throwing rocks at them and instead of just letting them starve to death. So we're really trying to create change, um, even in the most remote rural areas of the world where people have absolutely nothing. And with farm animals as well. So we, um, we started with a chicken program about a year and a half ago. Um, we started teaching farmers how to carry chickens and how to care for them. Um, and since then, we've moved up to goats, and hopefully by next year, we'll be working on cattle um, and how to treat cattle differently. But it's been really amazing to see because over the last year, I have my team go around and just take random pictures without people knowing. And you'll see, like, instead of the chickens hanging from the bicycles, like, tied, you see people, like, walking around with chickens, like, <laughs> in their hands. And I'm like, oh, look at that. They took our class. Yay, go. <laughs> so you can make a difference. Um, and then we also do a lot with helping wild animals. Um, we have a wild dog project, which are those beautiful creatures up on the top. Those are wild dogs, um, also known as painted dogs. We have a pack, the last pack actually, um, in an area in Botswana that we are helping um, preserve right now. So also helping wild animals and silverback gorillas. We have a project with um, local community groups and teaching them on how they can preserve and how to deal with silverback gorillas that share the same space as them. So that's me and that's my foundation, Compassion Kind. So if you guys are interested, I have cards up here. Um, if you'd like to get involved locally, we have a lot of events. We also do volunteer programs. We take people overseas, we take people to Puerto Rico. Um, but we also have a lot of rescue stuff here. So like I said, we have a flight tonight. We, we always need transporters, we always need fosters. 
Um, so if you want to get involved and live more compassionately, you can volunteer with Compassion Kind. Um, but, but really, I hope that you guys got a little bit out of this just about living your life more consciously on a day-to-day -day basis. The decisions that you make do affect other people around the world. They do affect animals. Every time you buy something, it has an effect. And I think just being a better consumer is probably the best thing that you can do to really help animals, the environment, yourself, and the environment. And um, I forget what I just forgot, but the whole <laughs> trifecta. I missed one, but I don't know which one. Um, so thank you guys. And if you have any questions, are we're doing questions or? Yeah. Okay, yes, if anyone has any questions.